This video is going to explain CPCTC. So um, kind of weird sounding, obviously it's an acronym for something. So um, CPCTC stands for um, the idea that corresponding, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's where we get, oops, sorry about that, the CPCTC. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, so what it says is exactly what it means. So if we have two triangles and we know that they are congruent to each other because maybe side angle side. So let's just use this as an example. So let's say I have A, B, C, and then we have over here D, E, F. And let's say that I told you that those two sides were congruent and those two sides were congruent and this angle is congruent to that angle. Now, that's all that you know. You know that those two corresponding sides are congruent. You know these two angles are congruent to each other and then these two corresponding sides are congruent. So, you can prove that these two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Now, we did that a few days ago. So that's the first part of CPCTC. All right, however, now that we know that these two triangles are congruent, what it means is that the other three parts that we didn't know before, we now know they're congruent because con corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we have congruent triangles. So now, since we have congruent triangles, the corresponding parts are congruent. So that means that I now know that B is congruent to E. I now know that angle C is congruent to angle F, and I also know that side BC is congruent to side EF. But those three things came after I used side angle side to prove that the triangles are congruent. So the bottom line is, in order for triangles to be congruent, that means that all three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding three sides of the other triangle. And it means that the three angles of one triangle are congruent to their corresponding three angles in the other triangle. So those are all congruent. However, we know that we can use side angle side angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 and hypotenuse leg to prove that the triangles are congruent. This CPCTC lets us say that now we know these other things are also congruent. So let's do one proof I think will be enough um, to get this explained. So let me move all my markers dumped everything out here. All right, so for this example, so this is gonna be our one and only example here, um, I am gonna start you off with this sketch here. Um, and then, you know, just remember that it's not necessary. oh, good grief, necessarily drawn to scale. Um, Let's say this is R, T, um, W, and Q. Some random letters there. All right, so here is your given information. 
So I'm going to tell you that RT is parallel to WQ. Okay, that's a sign for parallel. And then I'm also going to tell you that angle R is congruent to angle Q. And then what we're going to prove is that side RW is congruent to side TQ. Okay, so let's start at the beginning and mark what we know in our triangle. So we know that RT is parallel to WQ. So parallel does not mean congruent, it means parallel. So we know that those two sides are running perfectly parallel to each other. All right, we were told that R and Q are congruent. So we were given that information as well. All right, now, when I look at this, the only thing really that we've been given here is this, and we need to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So um, my thought is that um, we know TW is going to be congruent to itself. So that helps us out with um, a second part. So now we have an angle and a side. And then anytime we see parallel, we want to look for alternate interior angles. And we do have a set of alternate interior angles um, up here. So I'm just going to use this one right here. So this angle is congruent to that one because they're alternate interior angles. So now we can prove that these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. All right, so let's write out our um, proof here. All right, so statements and reasons. And remember, geometry is all about reasoning. Algebra was learning logic, logical thought, and geometry is working on reasoning skills. All right, so first up. Um, we were told that RT is parallel to WQ. So let's start with that. RT is parallel. Oops, well, I'm going to go with QW here. All right, now, that was given information. All right, not anything that we're going to do with that right this second. Um, the other thing that we were given is that angle R is congruent to angle Q. So that was given. So that gives us an angle. Um, we, I think next we said that WT is going to be congruent to itself. So WT is going to be congruent to TW. We'll just write it that way. And anytime we have um, something um, congruent to itself, that's reflexive property. All right, so now um, we got our angle here and our side here. So that was this angle and this side. But now we said these two angles were congruent. So that is RTW. So this angle right here is RTW. So RTW is congruent to this one, which we'll call QWT. So Q, W, T. Now, the reason why we know that those two angles are congruent is because alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, we were given that those lines were parallel, so alternate interior angles are congruent if parallel. Okay, so we know that alternate interior angles are congruent, but only if the lines are parallel, and that's what our given statement said. So that kind of helps us support that we know those two angles are congruent. All right, so now we have enough to prove um, using angle, angle, side. So by angle, angle, side, we know that triangle, and I might just go with um, this right here. RTW is congruent, oh no, ah, that's a triangle, um, QWT. 
All right, so now we know that this triangle up here, that one right there, is congruent to this one right here. Well, now that we know that, we know that this side is congruent to that side, we know that angle is congruent to that angle, and we know this angle, side, sorry, this side is congruent to that side because once we prove that triangles are congruent, then the other three parts that we didn't use are now congruent as well because that is what uh, congruent triangles mean. So, statement six is gonna be what we're supposed to be proving here, which was that RW is congruent to TQ. And we know that because after we proved congruent triangles, congruent parts are also congruent. So CPCTC is how we end that. All right, so that takes care of an example using CPCTC. Um, basically, what's going to happen is you'll know that you need to use CPCTC if your proof statement isn't telling you to prove two triangles are congruent. If you're trying to prove that two triangles are congruent, then we would have stopped on line five. That would have been our final one because that's where we prove the triangles are congruent. But this said to go a step further. So we know that in order to prove that two sides are congruent, we have to prove that the triangles are congruent, and then we know that all the rest of the parts of the triangle are going to be congruent as well. That is um, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.